Hi there. What has Father Fish been talking about for the last two and a half years? Well, we've been talking about the aquarium, the whole aquarium. But we have started at the bottom, at the foundation. The foundation is we propose dirt, soil, an enriched compound of various organic and inorganics that will create a viable and strong and healthy and rich environment for your plants primarily to grow in. And then we have taken the next step. That up to that point, we're a hundred percent with Wallstead. We add to that, however, two things. Number one, we add enrichments, supplements. And we add the supplements in order to increase the longevity of the soil. One of the difficulties that Wallstead described in her book her magnificent book, is that it just didn't last more than about a year. So by adding additional materials, minerals, and compounds, some organic, some inorganic, to the soil, we can extend its life long enough for it to really begin to assimilate and to develop into a fully flowing, fully developed biological system. The second thing we did was we put sand on top of that. Now, we did not use gravel because gravel leached the dirt through it. We used sand, two inches, two inches of sand, which had the salutary effect of keeping the dirt down in the bottom under the sand where it could not get to the water column. Now, there are a, a diversity of animal life, plant life, and bacteria as well as fungus that live in that sand bed and live in that soil and bring the two together. You can actually see over a period of time the soil seems to be moving up into the sand. And, and it is. It's happening by virtue of the biological activity that's going on at the level of that transition between the sand and, and the soil. That's a transition that occurs by virtue of microscopic life. Aqua fauna and aqua flora, animal life, aquatic animal life, and aquatic plant life that are living in that environment and bringing nutrition up into the water, in, into the, uh, the sand substrate where there is, frankly, more oxygen for them to be able to survive. That's the second thing we did was add sand. And then we did a third thing. And the third thing was to recognize the importance of what has come to be known in farming as the food web. So we went about the business of creating a food web in our aquariums. Now, how did we do this? We did this by using research that was done on the, the basic life force of rivers, creeks, streams, and ponds. What that research demonstrated was that at its foundation, the foundational food source in bodies of fresh water is the leaves of trees and other plants. Leaves. So what did we do? We went out into the wild, sent our, our uh, friends and neighbors our followers out into the wild to collect 
leaves, especially leaves deteriorating in a body of water, because that brought in then the <coughs> the bacteria and the fungus that were working on those leaves, as well as the shredders and the other animal life, uh, the animal, uh, the other aquafauna, aqua, yeah, aquafauna, growing on those, living on those leaves, brought all of that into the tank. <coughs> So as the third step then, we mixed in that top half inch of that two inches, mixed in some of this rich environment in order to create humus. Humus, H-U-M-U-S, humus. Not dirt, but the preliminary of that, if you will. Humus, which provides that fundamental food, that basic food source that nourishes and nurtures microscopic life. That microscopic life then is, is fed on as by prey, one of which is larger microscopic life and the other of which is small fish. So now we've created an environment in which small fish can survive indefinitely based on what's going on in that tank, <clears throat> based on the food web and the life force occurring in that tank. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there's one more thing we haven't paid attention to, and it's the next step. The next step in the process is the water the water the water has to be a consideration and a major consideration if we're going to have a genuinely healthy balanced natural environment so what about the water well water has a number of very unique properties one of which is has been as has been discovered in recent science about water, it has a kind of memory. The same sort of memory that our computer has. Rather than typing in data, the animals living in the water are typing into the water putting into the water their data, their electromagnetic pulses, their, not behaviors, but their chemistry in such a way as to create in the water, of the water, an environment that is in perfect alliance and perfect harmony with the fish and the plants that are living in it. So the water literally takes on the life of the animals living in the water and in so doing brings itself into greater and greater harmony with those plants and those animals. Now, why is this significant? Well, one of the things we know about water is that it can be caustic. And not just by having a high pH. It can be caustic in such a way as to create stress on the fish. It can be so unique from the needs of the fish it, it can be so divorced from their needs, their environment, their, uh, their life force, that it finds itself initially in conflict. We've all seen this. We've all seen how putting water in a tank can sometimes 
cause the fish to stress out and even die. It's because there's something wrong with that water. Now, it might be that it has chlorine in it. It might be that there's a, a profound variation in pH or in water hardness or in some other uh, essentially chemical aspect of the water that it creates an instant conflict with the fish. But there's another level. There's a level on which, well, think about this. Water takes on memory, takes on the memory of the environment it's in. So let's look at that water as we go back through uh, its delivery to us. If it's going through a bunch of pipes, if it's going through a chemical plant where, it's, where it has chemicals put into it, if it's going through some other kind of process that's highly synthetic and highly artificial, it will take on the, the properties of that environment so that by the time it's delivered to our fish, it is, to use a word I just used, caustic. It is hostile by virtue of its, of its nature to the needs and the interests of the animals in the tank. Now, that's not a permanent condition. And fish are pretty hardy. So if it's not terribly harsh, it will moderate. But that takes time for it to do. So here, look at this. Think about this. You have a tank, a brand new tank. And it just feels on edge. It feels a little unbalanced because it is. But over time, as the fish live in it, the plants grow in it, the substrate develops in it, that water changes. And we can see the change in the behavior of the animals. We can see it really in the water because the water seems to become softer somehow. Not that it's soft, but that it's more in harmony with the life that's in it. Why is it important then to not only understand this, but how is it important by virtue of what we're doing in our tank? Well, the, the first thing to acknowledge is that doing water changes is an act very often of desperation. Desperation born of fear about what's happening in that tank. And so the water change is an attempt to rid the aquarium of something that we feel is not healthy. <coughs> or it may be that we're trying to reinstall into the tank some elements in the water that we feel have been drained. So we feel that somehow perhaps the water um, it needs to be replenished in order to continue providing a certain kind of biochemical nourishment. There's some justification for that thinking. But I believe there is more justification for acknowledging that a tank can become balanced, particularly if it is not being overfed and if there are substantial plants growing in that water, it can become sufficiently balanced with the fish and the plants that it can perpetuate itself long term, much like a pond does, which until it rains remains very much unchanged. So if we're going to do water changes, we do water changes delicately. We do them gingerly. We do small water changes and we do them infrequently. I like to think that I change water in my tanks when I need to. And I do not usually 
need to because usually the tanks are fine. And unless there's something wrong, I don't like to make changes in that. So, okay, to recap now, we've done the foundation, the dirt. We've done a sand cap. We've created a barrier between the dirt and the water. We're, we've created a food web, which provides not just nourishment for everything, but provides a way to, to, uh, to use the waste that's produced in the system. And now we've looked at the water. And we're thinking about this water in terms of its memory, water memory. There's a link that I in, uh, welcome you to take a look at. It's called NES Health Energy for Life that talks about water memory and, and gives a little description of the history of that research. And we'll give you a better understanding of what the memory of water really is. So I just want us to be thinking about this and understanding that that water is every much is every much a part of the living environment, as is everything in there. And the water changes its character in that tank. So that when you're introducing more water, you're introducing a character that is foreign to what that water has become. Be sensitive to that. Be aware of that. And acknowledge that when you add water, you're changing the quality of what's going on in there. You're changing, in fact, the character of what's going on in there because that water that's been in your tank for a few months is not the same water that it was when you put it in there. It's changed. It's changed in many different ways. One of the ways that it's changed it is that it has taken on, it has assimilated into itself the character, the physiology, the biology, the energy of the animals and the plants that are living in it. It has become one with them. Well, let's just leave you with that, because that's enough to chew on for a while, and we'll come back to it. We'll be talking more about water's memory and how it affects your aquarium. Be sure to join us on Discord. The link is at the bottom. There's a wonderful conversation going on there between hundreds of YouTubers and others who are investigating the properties of deep substrate aquariums and now of the entire aquarium, including the water that's in it. We'll get to lights next, probably. But for now, I want you to be thinking about water. And again, come on over to Discord and share with us. Be sure if you're not subscribed to the Father Fish channel, to do so and click that bell so that you can get notifications of all of the videos that are coming out and the new research that's going on here. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. Very much appreciate that. And do make sure you're subscribed and make sure you're part of the shoal, the father fish shoal that is bringing a whole new community of fish keepers, a joy and a satisfaction that many have not known before. Bless you. Good day for now. See you again soon. Bye for now.